Today I'm gonna to create an oil spill in my home and then try to clean it up. <laughs> that would be a total nightmare to deal with, so I'm gonna use these tanks instead. It's gonna take a sec. <laughs> that is good. Look at that estimation. This one here will be my control, and this spill, I'm gonna try and clean up using bacteria. Cleaning up oil using bacteria might sound kinda ridiculous, but it's not. Just hear me out. After some of the biggest oil spills in US history, microbes have been the first to show up. Take the Deepwater Horizon disaster. In April 2010, a crew on the Deepwater Horizon drilling rig was closing up an oil well in the Gulf of Mexico when a surge of high pressure methane gas shot up into the drilling rig where it exploded and killed 11 workers. Over the next three months, that well spewed more than 300 Olympic swimming pools worth of oil into the ocean. And as governments and the oil industry were trying to deal with the disaster, so were microbes, specifically bacteria. Oil is really just a mix of different hydrocarbons, and following the spill, bacteria started gobbling them up. By gobbling them up, I mean metabolizing them, gaining energy and releasing carbon dioxide and water as byproducts. Bacteria are actually more like us than you might think. They also need food. In this case, it's just chains of hydrocarbons and not a sandwich. Most bacteria also need oxygen to metabolize that food. And fortunately, with the Deepwater Horizon spill, currents in the Gulf of Mexico continued to bring in oxygen so that the bacteria could keep metabolizing hydrocarbons. Some species of bacteria metabolized smaller hydrocarbons, like ethane, while other species broke down longer hydrocarbon chains, like N-hexadecane. Now, these microbes weren't able to clean up the entire oil spill. There was a lot of oil, but they still seem to do a pretty good job. And I wanted to see that for myself, which is why I have two oil-filled fish tanks in my kitchen. I got this bacteria online because what can you not get online these days? So let's do this. Oh, <laughs> I opened the wrong side. Okay, well, that's a lot of bacteria. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try and spread it out. Whoops. We still got this under control. Don't worry, don't worry. I'd say there's enough bacteria in there, so uh, now we just have to wait and see what happens. Look, 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 it's starting to break stuff apart. So you can see all of a sudden that there's sort of like bubbles popping up. There's a lot of movement that I don't think is just because I dumped a bunch of stuff in there. I do think that it's because the microbes are actually becoming active. So yeah, so much bacteria in here, probably more than I um, would have put if I hadn't accidentally dumped a bunch in, but I'm very interested to see what they do. Okay, yeah, this is gonna take a sec. So. While we wait and let these bacteria do their thing, let's talk about some other cool stuff that they can clean up. There are a lot of researchers looking at not only how bacteria can turn hazardous stuff into stuff that's less terrible for us, but how they can remove it from the environment altogether. One example of something bacteria can remove is uranium. Yes, the radioactive element used to power nuclear reactors and that was used to create the atomic bomb. The U.S. actually has a lot of uranium-contaminated aquifers and soil left over from the Cold War. So some bacterial species use uranium to gain energy. If you studied cellular respiration in school, you might remember that metabolizing food generates a bunch of electrons. And for cell respiration to continue, those electrons need to go somewhere. We humans dump the electrons onto oxygen when we breathe. In the case of these bacteria, they dump the electrons onto uranium. More recently, researchers also figured out that these bacteria can soak up uranium using lipopolysaccharide chains. These are lipid or fat molecules linked to strands of sugar molecules anchored to the outer membrane of the cell. And it turns out that a particular form of lipopolysaccharide soaks up uranium like a sponge. The cell then forms something called a vesicle, where the membrane with the lipopolysaccharide layer starts to close in on itself, 
creating what kind of looks like a soap bubble. So the uranium stays trapped, pulled out of the environment, and the bacteria coats itself with new lipopolysaccharides to start that process all over again. And as it turns out, cleaning up radioactive elements and gobbling up oil are really just the tip of the iceberg for what microbes can do. There's a chemical called perchloroethylene, or PCE, which is generally used as a cleaning product for things like fabrics, but also cars, to remove grease from brakes, for example. It can get into our drinking water, where it's been linked to different types of cancer. There are bacteria that can actually remove chlorine atoms from PCE and its breakdown products, leaving behind way less toxic compounds, like ethene. The challenge is getting huge amounts of these bacteria to sites that need PCE cleanup. In researching all of this, what I was really struck by was that bacteria can clean up waste like crude oil or PCE or uranium on their own. They haven't been genetically modified. They've just evolved in ways that allow them to do this. Some researchers are engineering common bacteria like E. coli to remove waste like mercury, but how cool is it that genetic tinkering isn't always needed. I mean, after the Deepwater Horizon spill, scientists were ready to bring in genetically modified bacteria to help gobble up those hydrocarbons, but the bacteria in the Gulf were already hard at work, and over the following days and months, the contamination selected for bacteria that could not only survive, but thrive under those extreme conditions. I want to make it clear that bacteria are helpful, but they aren't a free pass for us to do things that will destroy our planet. Plus, it's not like they magically clean up everything. Okay, let's see what we've got. Even though the experimental looks a little bit crazy, it's because the bacteria are coated in clay and stored that way. So it has this kind of weird film on it, but I can tell that there are less big globs of oil in this one compared to this one. So although I don't see a massive difference between these, I do think that the bacteria did help break apart some of the oil in this one. You know, if I was going to really help them out, I would have done something to aerate the water. So similar to what the Gulf of Mexico did for the Deepwater Horizon spill, bringing in that oxygen to help the microbes do their thing. So, you know, pretty solid experiment and it really just makes me excited to see what people might be able to do with bacteria in the future.